Halo Infinite developer calls the Slipspace engine a mystical beast and how there's still lingering code from Combat Evolved still within the engine. How does this affect the development of Halo Infinite? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving our news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos and want to see some more content like this, make sure you tap that like button. It greatly helps out the video and channel a lot, guys. And if you're new to the channel and want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as a wrap up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So every once in a while, 343 does these employee spotlights. Basically, it gives the public a way to kind of get to know the development team a little bit better rather than just being these faceless people were working on Halo Infinite. Up until recently, it seemed like Infinite was a bit of a myth when, until we got a chance to actually play the game. But this employee spotlight of Leonard Holman, who's an engineer at 343, gives a little bit of insight about what it's like to work with the slow space engine, and it's quite interesting. In this little interview, he's asked what it's like working with the slow space engine, and this is exactly what he says, which is kind of interesting, saying the slow space is really a mystical beast. It walks a fine line from intimidating futuristic technology married to little gems of classic gameplay and subtle authentic legacy behaviors which we'll touch on the subtle authentic legacy behaviors later in this video i love that the engineering team has embraced the modern features of c language which is a coding language it's an exciting time to be the C++ developer, at least I think so. Every once in a while, you'll find some real odd nuggets, surprising stuff from the original Halo CE code. It's almost like excavating an old archeological site trying to figure out what it was doing and if it's still needed. It happens less often now, but it's always fun when you find some old glimpse of the past and either modernize it to take advantage of current tech or just leave it as you found it. So this is the first time we've actually really had any kind of insight of what it's like working with the engine. Uh, from the general consensus, what I've heard from, at least from reading like Glassdoor reviews and just over the years of just keeping up with Halo on this channel, uh, the general consensus was it seems like that working at 343 is really nice and it's a really exciting project, but it seems like a lot of times the tools given to developers to make the game can be kind of tough to work with. And I think that's what he's kind of like lightly saying here with the subtly authentic be legacy behaviors because which i think is a really nice way of just saying sometimes things be kind of rough to work with because it's just like old tech that we're working with because they said right here that there's code from combat evolved still in within this game the thing with coding though sometimes if it just works it works and so it doesn't need to be changed and he mentions that right here saying like is there a chance to possibly expand on this make it better because slipspace engine even though it is a new engine it still has those foundations of the original halo engine within it basically they kept all the parts if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of thing so they they broke down all the parts that didn't exactly work but if it's not broken don't fix it kind of situation and we've seen this previously as well from developers at 343 talk about how that it's not a complete teardown of the original engine, but a developer from a previous live stream from 343 states how if you're a developer in Halo 5 only and then just jumped into Halo Infinite Subspace Engine, it would look completely different. Yeah, there's still some there's still some foundations. Um, it wasn't a complete and, and total um, rebuild. It was um, a teardown of certain systems that didn't allow us to kind of scale out to the places that we wanted to be. Um, but there will, there's definitely still yeah. code and foundation you that came from. But uh, it's a for an engineer who was on five, but not on, and then they came and saw this it would be a pretty foreign, foreign system. Yeah. So. so yes, technically it is a new engine, but it still has those old foundations of Halo, which is honestly probably the best way to go about doing this. Because honestly, what actually what happened with 343's development of the next Halo game is that right after the release of Halo 5, they just kind of went on to start making like what would be Halo 6, but then they realized kind of the landscape of like shooter environment player feedback they've written like okay if we're gonna really try to do this game properly we need to tear down the engine and build it back up so development for Halo Infinite really didn't start until about 2018 because very about that time is when they actually had like the subspace engine all put together so when people hear the number like oh they've had six years to develop Halo Infinite that's true but really Halo Infinite's really been in development for more like three years 
which is a much more standard time frame of development when it comes to making these kind of games. Also, it has been kind of mentioned throughout the public domain of information that uh, Bungie was never really the best when it comes to categorizing and just organizing their code in the best way possible, especially with Halo 2, that whole thing was a complete mess. I mean, we've even had modders talk about developing in Halo 2, saying how it was like held together with duct tape and popsicle sticks is how he phrased it when it comes to working with the Halo 2 engine. And from what I've heard from interviews and various bits of information going around the internet is that when 343 got the rings, the Halo, to be able to be the, uh, the stewards of the franchise, basically, that uh, Bungie kind of gave him a big mess of code when it came to the working with the engine they're like here work with it and but 343 was like uh we'll try and they certainly did with halo 4 and halo 5 but they you know obviously with the way the landscape of shooters and gaming right now is at the moment where constant updates are needed constant bits of information and, and also content being dropped into the game that you know you need to kind of rework your system to be able to supply players with their needs of new content, new gameplay elements and things like that. So to me, what it sounds like, Slip Space is more just like a teardown of all like the systems that kind of had the, the workflow and they just readjusted it all. So it's much more streamlined kind of experience that they're much more native to. Since they're the ones that created it, it helps them create content faster, which ultimately helps out Halo players and the community as a whole. So if you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, here's a playlist with all my Halo news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.